Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, our production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. And Cameron Shell has done it again. Big news, a record Q1. For those of you who don't know him, he's the chairman and CEO of Dragonfly, trades on the CSC under DFLY. For our friends in the US, DFLYF. And even for our friends in Europe on Frankfurt under 3U8. For those who knew the story because you saw that headline and who wouldn't be attracted to a record quarter, this is what you need to know. Uh, uh, Dragonfly is an award-winning, very important to understand, industry-leading drone solutions developer. What does that mean? Most of us know the recreational side of drones and even simple commercial applications like real estate videos. But the fact of the matter is that the drone industry is booming in ways people can't imagine. And Dragonfly is delivering. That's why it's a, that's why it's a solutions developer. For example, I'm going to give you two of uh, a dozen of these because we couldn't go through all of them. Uh, they develop a vaccine delivery payload for use in critical regions. That was a $750,000 contract. They partnered with Windfall Geotech uh, to commercialize an advanced artificial intelligence-based platform to help solve the global, the global problem of landmines by using drones to detect and find and get rid of them, which not only takes care of an immediate problem, but then brings unbelievable economic prosperity to those regions that clean those out. And that's just two guys of many applications. What's that translate into? 2020 revenue, $4.36 million, up 216%. And what we're talking about today, Q1 revenue, 1.54 million, up 210%. Cam, welcome back. George, thanks. I, it's, I, I just love your energy. I love what you bring to the table. I love the passion you have for entrepreneurialism and, and uh, letting us be a part of what you do. And no, I, hey, thanks for letting us be a part of it because we believe that Canada is the new Silicon Valley and companies like yours are proving us right because amazing technology companies that are doing unbelievable things and you can and investors can actually participate in their growth for the next five years. So I, I thank you for that. Let's talk about the record revenue before we get into the numbers. How big is this to, to put together another record quarter uh, to prove that the Q4 wasn't just a fluke? Yeah, so this is our uh, our fourth uh, Q in a row where we've had 50% uh, cumulative Q over Q growth and 200% uh, year over year. And uh, frankly, we do not see an end in sight. There is no way that we can meet the inbounds right now, not, not a chance. And so for us, uh, right now, it is, uh, you know, we've got a great balance sheet. We've got $17 million on the balance sheet. We've got an incredible pipeline. We have a historically very strong engineering and AI bench. And so right now for us, it's all about picking the right customers. Like, like I don't know, I've, I've you know, I've, I've been an entrepreneur for my, the, at least what memory I have left my entire life. And rarely have I been in a spot where we get to pick and choose customers and, and, and then picking the right talent. So we're, we're supplementing our talent right now. It's probably where I spend most of my time uh, is either between uh, talent, uh, which is also parlaying over into acquisitions and or, or spending time with customers, which is the, my favorite thing to do uh, in, in the world. And so I, I think, you know, I can't give guidance, but, you know, if I just look at the pipeline, I look at how busy my schedule is in terms of being in front of customers and architecting products. I, I don't see any end in sight. And we're going to keep driving revenue. We, we want to be the number one or number two player in this space period end of story. We like we want to completely dominate that that space. And we think we have the opportunity to do it over the next couple of years. And you guys are hitting on all cylinders, product, sales, pipeline, people. Is it safe to say, Cam, like, is it really safe to say that the company is in the best position and the balance sheet should have said that? Is it the best position it's ever been in? And yep. you're and you're so ideally positioned to take advantage of the paradigm shift in, in drone solutions? I, I would say it is. And I think there's two aspects of that. I think we're I think we're in the best position for where we need to be today, right? Which is a really great spot to be in. Cause you know, through a lot of lean years, you know, where there was lots of us weren't taking wages and lots of us were developing products for free and lots of us were, you know, all that kind of so so to, but we're in the best position to where we need to be today. But I think. We're also, but, but, you know, we were doing that in the past because we always wanted to position for where the market was going to be, not where it is today. And I think we're right now at a very unique spot where we're in a good spot for where, we're the, where the market is today, but we're in an amazing spot, I believe, for where the market is going to be tomorrow. And I think we are positioned to be that number one provider going forward. Well, well then tell us, you know, where is it going to be tomorrow? Uh, where, where, what, give us a, give us the benefit of being in your head for a second. Where do you see it being? Uh, not just at the end of 2021, but halfway through this decade, because I know you think long-term 
we're, we're, what are drones going to be doing in our lives? George, the benefit that I can uh, uh, parlay to, to you and to, to our esteemed shareholders is I, I don't get inside my head. I can get you inside our customer's head. So as a drone company in North America, we have the, the very privileged position to have an incredible customer base because we've been around for 20 plus years. So we've got a customer base that's the envy of the commercial drone space. That means that I don't have to predict. I get to see what our customers are asking for. Everything that we're doing and moving forward with is because a customer has asked for it. And what we have seen unequivocally in the market is that a customer, at least the customers that we deal with, which are the Fortune 5000, right? The customers that we deal with, they don't want to go to one place for a drone company. They don't want to go to one place to get their services. They don't want to go to another place to figure out their analytics. They don't want to go to another. They want to come to somebody that, that says, hey, listen, we, we, this is our problem. And we need a drone. We don't even need a drone. This is what we need to solve. Can a drone help? And then we go from design to build, to regulatory, to delivery, to services, to analytics, to storage, to and on and on. And that's what they're looking for. And in our mind, there isn't a better company. In, in fact, I don't know of another company in North America that can provide a turnkey solution like that to a Fortune 5000 company with the credibility that we have. And, and that's where we're gonna continue to go with our market. It, it's, a, and it's an incredibly privileged position to be in. We're just doing what our customers want right now. It sounds like the world is your oyster because clearly drones are gonna are gonna are gonna are gonna participate in so many verticals. I mean, the the opportunities are almost endless for where they can be applied smartly with real solutions to you know, to to improve on things uh, in so many aspects of, of the of the economy. So, where what vertical do you think you're gonna see the greatest growth coming from, uh, short term and maybe down the road, but especially in 2021. Where, what vertical is the one where you see the greatest growth? Yeah, that's a, that's a really tough call. So I think prolifically, you know, delivery is going to be the most visible, right? And um, yeah. what, what we see is now, now it, it's, it needs to be really uh, clear here. You know, we are not a delivery company. We're a solutions provider. So all the plethora of delivery companies that are emerging out there are becoming our customers. That, that's, that's what we see happening. So they're looking for highly specialized autopilot systems or regulatory insight or design build or uh, or planning systems or logistics measures or things like that. So so we, we see that as a massive growth area for us. Uh, in particular, we're very strong in the medical side of that. So whether it's developing payloads for vaccine delivery or whether it's developing uh, EMS procedures and training for the drones to actually be the first responders into disaster areas. We also are very uniquely positioned in that area because we have a proprietary technology that we developed called Vital Intelligence that where the cameras in our drones can actually read heart vital signs. So heart rates, respiratory rates, blood pressure. So as these first responders are coming in delivering medical equipment, right? They are also taking the vital signs of the, um, of the survivors that are on the ground or the accident victims. It, it's, it's incredible what's unfolding. So, be, so you, you know, we see delivery as a, as a huge one. But uh, quite frankly, you know, the industrial side of things or the resource side of things. So we're doing a ton of work in the mining area uh, where we've got an AI system that actually helps uh, determine the targets on the ground. Uh, and that's a fantastic million dollar contract uh, that we signed with Geofall Wintech, excuse me. Yep. And um, uh, we've got amazing forestry clients who are using our proprietary LIDAR, LIDAR system to do inventory counting, disease management. I, I mean, it's just- uh, I have a client of ours, a client of ours, that uh, last week said that they were able to use a drone to go up and to go up 6,000 feet. And instead of sending humans up there and picks and shovels and trying to figure out what they got, uh, they sent the drone up there with highly, and it might've been one of yours because they couldn't tell me who it was, but highly specialized cameras, highly specialized analytics and took every inch and came back to them with a positive result. And they said, George, if it wasn't for the, for the, for the drones we used, uh, I don't know how long it would have taken us to get up there, do the work. Could have been a, a 12 or 24 month ordeal. So when you say drone delivery, a lot of us think ah, delivering a pizza or an Amazon book, yep. that's all. But you're talking about, no, you're talking about just about anything that needs to be delivered critically. Critically, yeah. So, so we... Uh, th listen, I, I think the hype around delivering a pizza or socks or those types of things is, is interesting. But you know, the real money and what the regulators care about and the, the B2B and the B2G applications are in are generally in public safety 
or they're in industry. And, and that's where that's where our background is. And that's where we're going to continue to focus in that space. Now, that's not to say if we have a customer uh, that comes to us and says, hey, we, we, we want to deliver pizzas in this residential area and we need to figure out a, a flight planning system or something. You know, of, of course, we're, we're, we're going to we're going to look at that. But but our, our core focus is is much more uh, infrastructure, much more industrial, much more you know critical services. Let me ask you, because we talked about vital intelligence, if I can just go back and revisit that for a second. And again, Cam explained that, but that's their, that's your touchless uh, health measurement tech uh, for symptoms detection, for symptom yeah. detections. Given the fact that COVID seems to be winding down, everyone's getting vaccinated. Uh, do you see a pickup? Because as more people come out, businesses and casinos and hotels and family entertainment complexes are still going to want to be safe. Or because I would, or devil's advocate, or is there going to be a wind down to that because people get vaccinated and, people, and yeah. customers aren't as worried? Yeah, so I think there's three uh, three kind of areas that I'd love to answer that question on. First of all, uh, being able to have the vital intelligence technology prevalent in things like a stadium or a casino or something like that that's never been our focus. We always thought that that was a short term view. Where we see the pickup happening and and continuing, and we will have significant growth in this area this uh, this year, is uh, think like very good organizations that have returning populations, uh, workforce populations. So the back house of that casino, they're going to have their uh, their staff uh, come up to our little screen on the wall that's about the size of a thermostat and check in. Vital signs checked. Check mark. Go. Event management. Check mark. Go. Uh, uh, school populations, they'll probably continue with that as well. Now, the reason that this are, are a factory, the same thing, they want their workers checked before they go in there. We're, the best industries out there aren't going to get caught flat footed again, right? Now, now listen, your, your mom and pop or whatever, you know, uh, restaurant isn't going to be doing that. But organizations that have right. tens of thousands of customers that when there is a surge or a resurgence, and those types of things are going to happen for sure, right? Like it's statistically impossible for it not, it, the coronavirus isn't gone, right? It's, it's being managed. And so, but what can happen is, you know, a factory getting into a spot where there is an outbreak, right? Or an event being in a spot where it's been targeted that there was an outbreak because of this particular event. So the, the risk mitigation of that organization saying, look, every single one of our people came through and they were checked and they were health positive. We followed all our things, our, ins our insurances and compliance and all that type of stuff massive growth market, entire new industry. And we are screaming down that path and we'll do millions in sales there. Uh, well, I, yeah, and I believe the, the, the Biden administration's $6 trillion stimulus package had hundreds of millions of dollars in there for exactly these 30, kind of solutions. So is that a massive dollars. tailwind for you guys? $38 billion has been attributed to, to uh, pathogen mitigation, right? Which is exactly what this te technology does. Now, the second area of this, um, is in our public safety, right? So our public safety, our EMS response uh, initiatives, all of those types of things where you've got a drone coming in as a first responder or and, and looking at a disaster relief situation and being able to take the vital signs of uh, survivors on the ground or, uh, or if it's flying into a situation where it needs to know that the workers are still safe and it can take its uh, vital signs and things like that. The military applications for you know, confirmed death count or casualties or things like that. Like that's all a massive growth area. Um, now, and then the third area that's that's incredibly large for us, which is, you know, an uh, unintended consequence, but it's, it's working out very well, is telemedicine. So we've now ported that technology onto your smartphone. Uh, sorry, you can't see it here, but your smartphone or your, uh, your laptop, your um, for remote patient monitoring, your tablets. So you're sitting in your doctor appointment on your, uh, on your laptop like this, and the doctor's seeing your heart rate, your respiratory rate, your blood pressure, and all of it. So again, that's not the drone business, but it's a technology we developed that we're now licensing into other areas. So uh, again, that, that's the advantage of Dragonfly, is that we do things that customers want. We've got the experience and the capability to commercialize it, right? And now we've got a product that's completely uncompetable. Like, there's no other drone company in the world that has this technology. So, so when, when, when you say to, you want to be number one, number two in the world, yeah. That's the great thing. You're backing it up. This yeah. isn't George Com drone saying, I want to be number one or two in the world. That's a it's a pipe dream. How long do you think you get there, Cam? How long, you know, how long until you think you can it's you're almost like a sports team? You're the you're the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys asking of given the talent, give what you guys are doing. How long is it gonna take you to win the Super Bowl? How long is it gonna take Dragonfly, you think, to get to that number one, number two position in the world? Yeah, I think I think three years. I think three years. 
Yep. I, I mean, I, well, I, I think in, 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 on some measures inside of the next year, we, we could be that company. But uh, I think just the scale of, of where we'll go in terms of just the, the, the prudent uh, ramping up to the right. numbers that we can be doing and the resourcing required and, and the infrastructure to put in place and stuff uh, that we are now doing based on our customers coming into us. Um, I think technology wise, uh, in some of the aspects, we're years ahead of, of where the competition is. And I think it take, it'll take, you know, 18 months for that to commercially show itself. And then, you know, I, I think three years were, comf- in my opinion, we're comfortably uh, number one. And, uh, and then we've got to work harder because there's going to be a lot of other people that are going to see what we've done and the market's going to be maturing and there's going to be a lot of people coming after us. And- well, it's amazing that investors get a chance to take, you know, to take that ground floor opportunity ride with you uh, through the next three years because you guys are doing unbelievable things. Uh, on the business side. I just can't believe all the different, I wish I could sit there and name all the applications. We need a different show just for that. Let's switch gears to the capital markets. Yeah. How, you know, a lot, a lot of companies, many companies announced intentions to uplist the place like the NASDAQ because they legitimately believed it. Some use it as a buzzword. They just want to get some hype out of their stock. Clearly you guys saw something coming down the road in your pipeline that would warrant it. And that's why you guys were planning ahead. And you're definitely uh, you're you're definitely qualifying for it. Um, how is the uplist plan going? Yeah, I, I would suggest that we're we're in the very near term, and I'd love to say specifically, but you, you know I just have to be prudent in that regard. Um, but it but but it's near term, and yeah, you know, you know we've been through several rounds of uh, comments where you know one regulatory body's cleared us, another one's close, and um, you know we believe that being on the Nasdaq uh, with a stock price that's five dollar plus. And, and, uh, and the institutions being able to want to have a choice of who are they going to pick in, in this vertical? Who are they going to pick uh, you know, in the drone and autonomy space? And, and there are a couple of larger players in the public space, very well-backed VC type uh, companies. I'm not worried about those. It, we, we've beat them all before. And so I'm, I'm confident that, that, uh, that the market's big enough and two that we can compete with them very comfortably. Of course. But then if we look at the, at the public options out there, I, I think that we're really going to be the best public option uh, for people to uh, to take a look at. So I'm, I'm very bullish on what a NASDAQ um, listing could do for us. Uh, we have started it a while ago. NASDAQ's super busy. It just takes time. Um, but uh, all I can say is if you look at the quality of our board, former White House Chiefs of Staff, former Secretary of Transportation, former GC of Homeland Security, the list goes on. These are not type of people that take on these types of endeavors without that type of credibility and upside in front of them. So, you know, we've got a great governance uh, committee and, um, and, I'm, and, I'm, and they've been fantastic in leading us through this process. And so I, I, I'm comfortable that we're, you know, we're inside the next quarter to be listed. And, and that's, a, buddy, that's amazing. That really is. Um, and the CSC has been great to Dragonfly okay. and we'll continue yep. to be, you know, we'll get hope maybe we'll- Oh yeah, no, well, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll stay listed on the, the Canadian exchange. That's so we'll continue to be great for you. Yeah, no, listen, we're very, we're very, very bullish on, on the CSE and, and, and what Richard and their team have all done and what, and what they stand for. I mean, they're the entrepreneurs exchange and uh, they're, yeah. they're, friendly, they're friendly to the boards of public companies that are creating value. But having said that, and, and they are, the CSE are simply an amazing group of people. Um, the NASDAQ, you must have, are you getting some, some form of feedback? Are you starting to figure, are you starting to feel sentiment? Because no matter what, the U.S. markets are really, you know, they, they run and gun on great cutting edge technology, technology solutions. What kind of early feedback are you getting or appetite are you feeling for, for Dragonfly? You know, times 10, right? It's just, it's 10 times the market, it's 10 times the amount of investors. It's, the, you know, there's specialists down there, right? In Canada, we generally as investors have to be generalists, right? In the, in the U.S., you have massive funds that are making specific bets on Absolutely. autonomy. You're making specific bets on delivery. You're making specific bets on drone. And, and these, are, these are individual funds that are bigger in some cases than, than the entire tech sector in Canada. <laughs> so uh, while we can develop incredible tech in Canada, you know, that capital market power in the States, if you perform, we got to perform, and, which we are, right? But, but, but we understand, you know, the economic and social contract. We have to perform. And uh, if you look at us announcing customers and, and results compared to any of the comps out there, you know, we shine. And I think that's why we're going to get the attention. But we can't take our eye off that ball. I think this comes from my experience. I've had a couple of clients uh, get onto the NASDAQ. And when they got there, 
M&A opportunities just opened up um, uh, because of the fact that, hey, they're good companies. They qualify for NASDAQ, bigger exchange. George Com says to ABC Widgets, hey, uh, you know, you want to buy us. We want to be part of your family and, and you've got a NASDAQ listing. Uh, I know you can't be specific, but am I right to assume that there are probably some, some, some good M&A opportunities or feelings or people are reaching out to you to talk about M&A? And, and do you think that'll probably pick up once you've got the listing uh, down? There's no question. M&A is a big part of what we do uh, or what we're going to do. It's, it's a part of, of what we've done. And there's, uh, there's two general things that we're looking for. We're looking for very specialized technology, right? That, that gives us a competitive edge, or we are, we are looking for uh, somebody that brings uh, a customer to us that we really want, that embeds customers into us and, and it increases our ability to, um, to sell our existing products uh, into. Um, and I think if there's a third, it's, it's, you know, an aqua hire, right. Or an aqua acquisition, if it has specific talent that we're looking for, and we yeah, can't yeah, that's a big hire one. that talent, you know, we'll go buy that talent, uh, for, for specific work that we're doing, um, right now, but, but the currency of a NASDAQ, the credibility of a NASDAQ, that, that is absolutely a big, big part of us. So, which listen, I'm, I'm comfortable or, that organically we're going to hit our numbers, but as we layer in a number of the acquisitions that we have been working on, um, you know, it, it, that's how I want to beat the street. Product, people, uh, balance sheet, sales, pipeline, uplist. Cam, I, I can't, as maybe as the proxy for all shareholders, you know, I got to say congrats to you and the entire team and thank you to you and the entire team because uh, it sounds like the Dragonfly story is only beginning its next and biggest chapter. Uh, so last words to you, if maybe... If you agree with that, or there's another message you want to give to your no, I try, well, first of all, you're you're incredibly gracious, and thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, and I think you're, I really, I believe you're right. Like, I think we're just beginning. Like, it's it, the drone industry is now just starting. Like, it's kind of like it's at the it's at the end of the beginning, right? It's or it's at the end of the prep, and now it's starting. And that in the last ten or fifteen years of the drone industry has kind of been, hey, is, you know, what are the use cases? It's cool, where can we find customers? What, you know, is this what, regulation? It's starting, you know, the, the, the confluence of regulatory and technology, right? And now public acceptance due in large part to, to what's happened in, in COVID, those three things have come together at this time. And, and we're fortunately, I'd like to say completely by design, but somewhat obviously by accident and circumstance and good luck. We're, 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 we're where we need to be for our shareholders. Yeah, I think you're a little humble. Yeah, everyone has a little good luck and a little, you know, success requires that, but you have to be in a position to take advantage of that, of that good luck and good fortune comes your way. You just have to be positioned. And you guys clearly, and I'll end off with this. I love to see success stories that come from persistence. Uh, you guys didn't hop on some hot trend, uh, and I'm sure, I guarantee it, 10 years ago, there are people telling you, what are you doing with this drone stuff? It's not going anywhere. It's not growing fast. They aren't Boy, the Chinese, the all the, yeah. All of it, right? And, and the fact that you held on to the vision because you knew where this was going to be one day, and you were, you were going to make sure you and your shareholders were positioned for it and not miss it, and now... I mean, Cam, I'm talking about when I look the way I look at small cap investments, because I've been doing this for 25 years and I'm not giving financial advice or anything, but I just see growth for the next 20 years. Yeah. Literally, this decade is going to be a paradigm parabolic move in the drone in, in the drone industry. And then after that, it just just further penetrates our lives for the next 20 years. But I'll even take the next 10. Yeah. George, we just have to not screw up at this point and we will be a player No. Well, if, if we perform, we'll be number one. And that's our goal. That's our well, goal. You haven't screwed up yet. And I think you guys are going to continue to do great. But congratulations. Thanks, Cam. I know how busy you are. Uh, you're, you're actually off site. We can't talk about where you are. But you're, you're, the fact that you take the time to get on here, uh, respect your shareholders, really want to make them part of the story, tell them what's happened, I think is amazing. You're a fantastic communicator. And I thank you for being here. Sure, thank you. Agoracom rocks. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, buddy. Uh, for everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast, you know, maybe in your car or you're walking or you're working out uh, and you're doing it on Spotify, Google or Apple or your favorite podcast platform to Cameron Shell. He's chairman CEO of Dragonfly. 
trades on the CSC under DFLY, trades on the OTCQB under DFLYFF, DFLYF, sorry, but we don't know. That's not going to be around for too much longer from the sounds of it, and that's great. So, guys, make sure you do your make sure you do your due diligence. That's the only thing I can say. We can't tell you what to do. The only thing we can say is start your due diligence by getting to Agoracom, go to the profile for Dragonfly, because we know there's a lot of cutting edge technology, multiple applications. So we've neatly summarized it for you. So you really got a good 10,000 foot view of the company. And then from there, link over the Dragonfly site to do your deep dive uh, due diligence. Because if you're like us and you know that artificial intelligence and drone technology and solutions uh, are, are, are gonna dominate this decade, then you gotta decide how big of a participant Dragonfly is uh, Dragonfly is going to be in that. We can't tell it to you, but don't tell us 12 months from now. We didn't tell you so. Have a great day. See you next time.